ready. <sighs> Hello and welcome to Not the Twin Snakes podcast. This is the Twin Towers podcast because the other snake is not here right now, but I'm joined by a guy that I consider a brother, great man, friend of the show, but host of the show now, Mikey Blaze. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I've been really excited to do this, and I'm glad we got back in touch. For sure. This isn't the first time you've been on the show. We have the legendary uh, Alex Jones Frogs Are Gay episode that you made an appearance on with me and Carson. (laughs) Yeah, don't promote that. (laughs) Everyone should go back and take a look at that because it's good stuff. (laughs) Um, but yeah, on some no homo shit, um, it definitely, we just reconnected last week after not seeing each other for a decent amount of time. Yeah, over a year and a half, probably. Which is crazy. Like, yeah. we cannot let that happen. I think the world is a better place when the Twin Towers are erect yes. and upright. And I, I love the moniker Twin Towers. We're, what what are you, 6'2"? Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, Twin like Towers compared to we're incel that Reddit tall. guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But, um, but the per- person who gave us the name, you, uh, was it Crocker? It was, yeah. yeah. And he was like five, five eight. So, so it works. We were towers. It's just him. one of those things that has stood the test of time, and plus, it plays off the twin snakes perfectly. Yes. Um, for the record, you know, Carson, if you're seeing this by any chance, we're keeping your seat warm. Um, you're always welcome back to jump in, but I will give you the stare. Even though you're not here. I mean, we'll make it a triple threat contest for all I care, because I think that was one of the best episodes that went down in recorded history. I don't think enough people watched it. (laughs) Meta trash. So many good moments. It was just great. Um, So I think definitely the... It's so weird trying to start off out of like because we were talking and, and just enjoying ourselves, and now we're like, we feel like we're presenting to like a classroom or something. But let's get into some shit. I think that the first, the first thing to say is that the uh, the first, the thing the world needs right now is obviously another podcast because there's yeah. not enough of them out there right now. Yeah, not a lot of people think about doing this. Of doing a po- exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I think that bringing this to the table is something new and fresh. For the record, um, and I got the receipts to prove it. I my first podcast I ever did was in 2011. Now, granted, I've probably done about 25 of them over the past you know 13 years, but. EST since 2011 there's been burning bridges there's been the twin snakes pod now there's the twin towers iteration of the twin snakes pod it's fucking sweltering up here dude it's it's so hot i can't believe that you didn't wear shorts that's insane um buffalo is you ever see albert einstein wear a pair of shorts no maybe you're just a genius (laughs) that's why i do it we turn the air off for the sound and it is fucking hot as fuck up here but we're just gonna power through it Because this is the heat wave, and everybody's talking about the heat wave. I got the heat advisory on my phone. You know, you run into anybody, that's the first thing they say. Oh, man, it's fucking hot out. And it is fucking hot out. But, I mean, this is my take on it, and you can agree or disagree. If you complain about shoveling and the snow and the driving and being inside, you're not allowed to complain about the heat. You got to pick a fucking side. Yeah, yeah. As hot yeah. as I fucking am, I don't give a fuck. I'll deal with it all day long. It, well, as like a man, I don't. I try not to get mad at either about the weather. Yeah, it's kind of a bitch move, right? Well, it's just it, yeah. It's like everyone complains about the weather. Yes, and it's kind of like the go-to topic that you talk about when you like are having small talk with somebody. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, man, it's the it's pretty the warm thing. outside. You come to a bar and it's like, hey, weather is looking bad out right. there. I hate that. It's a generic. It's a very generic go-to. But line. it's an easy out an for easy. sure. I hate like having to like fake like interest in that level of conversation. Like you know, like oh my, somebody God. brings that up and it's like it's not someone that I know that well. Where I can where I can say like, dude, like that's I don't want to talk about the weather. But someone that like maybe it's like an older person or like someone that you're you work with or whatever and. They bring up the weather, and you kind of just have to like go with the flow. And it's like, like yeah. jump into Imagine that fake if combo. every time I came up to you for like twenty years, I was like, "That smells like Teen Spirit by Nirvana." <laughs> it's like, what else is there to say? Yeah, we've it, done everything's it all. been said about exactly. It. Like we all know it's hot. I and mean, with that being said, we're on the second floor. There's no, we turn the fan off, so there's no air circulating. So it's gonna get warm up in here. Hopefully. There's not any sort of open flame <laughs> or grease fire that will lead to this place burning down like yeah. the pink flamingo did 
yes. in Buffalo just a couple days ago. Now people are going nuts over this pink thing. What was their thing? The rib sandwich, steak sandwich, steak sandwich. So I believe my theory is that that fire was completely related to Greece and steak oh, sandwiches. Absolutely, there's no man. fucking question. Like, there's no yeah. way that that was related to anything else. Like, I don't know. I've only been to that place a couple times, but I feel like they probably didn't clean their grill that well. No, they probably only cleaned up when the health inspector came through. Right, like right before so yeah, they could and, stay open. And then maybe like they had a buildup that no one saw. Exactly. That had to be why. They probably didn't have proper ventilation or any shit like that. So, I mean, RIP to the pink. I think it's funny. I saw there was a video of people like grabbing bricks from the pink. People love the pink. I know. It I, has a I lot never of charm. really liked it. But. No, I mean, I've, I've been there a couple times. Like, I have no specific memories there. It's not like a place that's near and dear to my heart, so I really could give a fuck. I'm sad that a business went down. Like, that's sad for the people who own it. But for all the rest of you goofballs who are, like, posting your memories, trying to grab some sympathy out of it, it's just funny. When, when anything tragic happens or any event happens at all, it's like people have to, like, get their... They have to somehow attach it to their own it, it existence. It goes back to like when uh, the guy, anybody famous dies, and then like somebody posts a photo with them. They, right. They met at a comic con or exactly. something. Exactly. Like I, I was Great involved guy. with this too. Right. Like I, I'm experiencing more tragedy now because I really loved it there. But I guess it's a Buffalo fucking hotspot. A lot of people. I always, I always heard stories about it. People. It was kinda, always dead when I went in there. It was never. I went there. I've probably been there like three times, and yeah, it was. It was definitely not. Anything to write home about. I never got to try one of the legendary steak sandwiches. Oh, God. So, I mean, that's my bad, I guess. I'll never get oh, one now. Probably a good thing. It's uh, it's a bummer. Anytime there's a fucking fire, that's kind of scary. Because it's just, I don't know. Fire freaks me the fuck what out. What was that band that had a pyro? Great White. Great White. Yeah. Have you ever watched the video of that? Yeah. That is some chilling shit. Yeah, that everyone. goes up there with the beheading video oh my far. god yeah. dude like there's a part of that video where all the people are trapped at the exit and they're trying to get out and there's so many people that it's like bottlenecked yeah. so they're like screaming and trying to get out but there's too many people so they're all getting crushed and there's just like smoke billowing out and then you hear that people got trampled and i'm always like how did you get like tr like someone walked on you like i feel like i wouldn't die from that <laughs> right right like how do you how does that end your life yeah, but the, the panic of a fire is ha something that's hard to even imagine. It's fucking scary. I remember there was a time when I was like really developing my anxiety issues that I have. And I would when I would go to concerts and shit, I would like double check for the exits and like make oh, sure I still, that I yeah, every cuz that's place fucking I go. scary, dude. You're in a place with so many fucking people and it's just like it can get hairy real fucking or fast. Or someone pulls out like a gun. Oh, dude, imagine that. Yeah. And that's that's not even like a crazy thought now. No. That shit happens all the fucking time. Every time I went to Walmart last week and I, every exit I was like eyeing up. That's so scary. It, why should I have to do that? You at shouldn't. A Walmart? You shouldn't. We're we're lucky to I mean, dude, there's not a worse um, situation I can imagine than like running into an actual tragic event like that where you're at a venue, you're at a concert, you're having the time of your life, and then all of a sudden there's like a fire or a shooting, and now everyone's oh. going nuts. Like That's like cinematic shit. Yeah. I wouldn't know what to do. I would be freaking the you fuck know what? out. And I have really bad anxiety too. But so do I. Any, anytime something happens that's like serious... For some reason, I don't have anxiety. No, you lock in. Yeah, you lock in. You lock you're in. You're like, okay, what am I going to do? You go sick almost. I don't go like, oh, no, I'm going right. to faint. You, you don't know? start having a panic attack if there's a real problem. You have panic attacks from when it's not a real problem. Yeah. But you're making up a problem in your head. That And that's so funny. It's fucking crazy. But yeah, if you were in a real dire situation, I think that it would definitely, you would you would lock on and you would you would click into survival mode. Yeah. You would hope. Fight or flight, and then you go to fight. Exactly. Yeah. But let's fucking hope to God that never happens. Yeah. Um, congrats are due. I forgot to put my jersey on. Honestly, it's too hot for any clothes gags. Well, there's a Kyrie Irving. Yes, there's a Ky which Boston is, Celtics Which makes no there. sense because Boston was facing Kyrie, so it's like... And Kyrie's a nice Irish boy. I absolutely. That. That's like a finals jersey. Like, it's not a Boston jersey. It's like a... It represents the whole finals. Yeah, that, it's not, like, ironed on. It's stitched. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, hit up my eBay, CodeEasy4521, if you want to purchase that jersey. It's about 35 bucks, Stitched size medium anyway point i might being, buy that jersey from you now it's not it's not bad it's pretty cool um, 25 bucks no shipping man yeah absolutely no, i'm not yeah, even you kidding can do, you I can might. do customer pickup 
Um, so the Celtics won. I think the NBA sucks. It what do you does. think about the NBA? I, well, here's how many players I can name on the Celtics. Jason Tatum, yeah. Kyrie Irving. He's on the Mavs. Oh, well, fuck. That's why it's funny, because he's on the oh, other see, team. I don't even so know. you didn't know. Yeah, exactly. Jalen Brown? Jalen is... Brown's on there, yeah. Okay, and that's it. Al Horford's know. on there. He's like Al Horford? Yeah, he's like 48 years old. He's like the Julio... Who's that baseball player in the Braves that was like in there for 30 years? I don't know, but he's Julio like Julio Franco. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, he's like that. He's like a senior player. Al Horford. He's on the Boston Celtics. So the is... Celtics won. It's, it's crazy because, like... This, the NHL and the NBA Finals are going on, and it's so much different than the Super Bowl because, like, the Super Bowl is a fucking event. Everybody tunes in. Everybody watches that shit. It's, like, a big deal, even if the game sucks. Don't you think the series takes away from it? It does because there's not that urgency to see that one game. But at the same time, like, I know so few people. Like, I'm thinking, like, Ethan Randall. Aside from him, I don't know anybody else that, like, watches the NBA. Well, the game caught up to Ethan Randall. That's for sure. His flat feet definitely cut him down yeah. in his prime. Fact being, though, that uh, basically... I, I tuned in for one of the games. I wanted to take a peek at it just to see if it was any good. It was fucking boring. It yeah, really was boring. I see, I didn't watch any of it. The only slightly intriguing part of it, I guess, was that like Kyrie played for Boston. Now he's on the Mavs, and he's like playing in Boston, and Boston hates him. But that wasn't enough to pique my interest whatsoever. And I don't know, something about basketball, just like the amount of points they score. It's a lot of back and forth. Like it just gets repetitive. Like the sound of the ball bouncing, it just like, it gets monotonous. It's just, it doesn't have that like, that pep for me to really lock Yeah, there's in no on. really splash plays. No, I mean, when I was a really, dunk maybe. I was locked in when LeBron went back to like Cleveland. See, that was exciting because that's like a storyline that everyone could follow. And you need something like that with basketball because it's just. But then you'd watch and you'd be like, all right, LeBron, get the points. And then he'd just like muster his way to the rim and then get fouled and maybe make it. All right, and that's not that exciting. And yeah, it was like, oh, I don't want to watch somebody shoot free throws all day long. Yeah, and then, well, Curry was great because he would just. That's any, true. He anywhere. anywhere. It so, was yeah, insane. That was like a weird, almost little, interesting golden era, like that Warriors Cavs rivalry thing that was going on. Now it was like Mavs and Celtics. It's like, who gives a fuck? Right. I don't even feel like the Celtics are the best team. I don't even know. I have no idea. But the, the weird thing is seeing. Because I'm seeing it on Twitter, and we'll touch on this in a little bit, but, like, people dressed up in those plastic green derby hats and, like, shamrock sunglasses, oh. goofy Celtics guys. And it made me think of a time, because it's been a while since we've done any podcast, so a lot of shit has happened over the time period. You had a kid, for one thing to mention, which is insane. You're a father. Happy yeah, Father's almost Day. three years. That's insane. And... We had the 2021 Brady-led Buccaneers winning the Super Bowl, which was nuts for me. But it just, looking at it now, and I know that I did my part, and I challenge anyone, it, like when the Bills eventually win it, you'll do it too. But it's so weird to almost position yourself as if you won we something. Won. Right. Yeah. Like in that weird fandom, like it almost, it comes off to me as like very childish. It, it is. And it's crazy. Yeah. It's something I would like to get out of my system. Like I said, when you when that happens to you, you're not going to be able to contain yourself because you're going to feel this need, much like the pink kind of, to like relate it to yourself and then like this feeling to like prove that you've been a fan and indulge in the victory. But it's like yeah, imagine when the Bills win or the Sabers. That's what I'm saying. I I've mean, been here since day one, right? And that will be fun. and I will cry. Oh, of course, Probably, it'll be yeah. it'll be insane. Like even even. As not a diehard Bills fan, like I'll still be very much excited about the parade that will happen, and it'll be pandemonium here. Like I remember in Bruce Almighty, they parody like the Sabers winning, and the fucking whole city's on fire, and that's probably what'll happen. Yeah, I'd rather see the Sabers win, I think, than the Bills. Not rather, but I, I, I would root for and prefer if I could pick one to happen first, I would pick the Sabres win. Same. I I'm cool with the Bills just being good. I, d I really don't care. It's nice having them in that level where they're just consistently in the mix now, whereas before that was not the case. Yeah. We're, in a, we're in a new era, new regime. But yeah, it's, it's just kind of it's just kind of weird to watch like um, it's such a weird thing for people to take joy and pride in something that has nothing to do with them it's it's a similar thing almost with politics too you'll hear people do drop the wheeze 
and yeah. become so aligned with someone that really they don't know. Could, well, could you could you imagine if like your favorite band came out with a good song and you were like, let's you celebrated the song as if you wrote it with them? Yeah. Right, it's a I similar mean, that's concept. kind of the same. And it's weird because with bands, too, it almost works in the opposite way where, like, if you're, like, a diehard fan of a band and then they suddenly become popular where everybody likes them, you almost feel, like, resentful towards Well, that's... Them. In 07, that happened with the Sabres. Remember everyone? For sure. Everyone, yeah, everyone was everyone's Mrs. Going to the Palace. Oh, God. And, how annoying is that? Oh, it made me... I was like, I've been here since 1996. Right, so there's that there's that feeling <laughs> yeah, of, there's and pride. I have that too, where Brady went to the Bucks, so now we have all these Patriots fans and all these people watching on a national level who are suddenly watching my team, and it's like, no, I'm the real Bucks fan. Yeah, you guys are <laughs> yeah. like you you fucking bandwagoners. I'm the real one. I went through the hard times, but it's like you don't get a reward for like liking a shitty team. It's no, just like, you're just wasting your time. You don't get you don't get like paid out. <laughs> But yeah, you you feel like, and again, it's it's one of those things where like you can't, no matter how hard you like a team and how hard you try to want them to win, they either just do or they don't. It has nothing to do with what you do, right? Like if it if it went to the best, most devoted fan base, then like Buffalo would be more in the mix and getting a shot at that shit. But it's like it has nothing to do with it. It's well, just lucky, really. <laughs> Who's your favorite WNBA team? I wish I could name one, but the AT and T <laughs> Astros or whatever the fuck they are. The Indiana Fever, I think that's the one. Chicago uh, Sky, Sky, and I honestly cannot name another one. New York Liberty might be one. Oh yeah. So, I've noticed this. I don't know if you've noticed this. I know you don't go on a lot of social media. I just started going back on about a week ago, and I'm ready to jump off already because I fucking had it. I can't take it. But one thing I've noticed is they are desperately desperately trying to push the WNBA as a legitimate sporting event that we're going to take seriously and watch and be interested in and no offense but if we're not watching the NBA oh, if they can't push the NBA and make that interesting with those guys there's very small chance that we're going to be tuning in for the yeah. WNBA if somebody final. asked me like who's your favorite WNBA player I go uh, Lisa Leslie right that's one that actually she, what is that from like 97 yeah that's from way back in the day that's and the only one I know that's funny because she's actually a person who like transcended like she did cross over and she could dunk you got to give Lisa Leslie credit because she's one that everybody knew there was you know? two oh Diana Taurasi she came right she came her. from UConn right all of them do so Caitlin Clark's the new big phenomenon and I don't know. Just, I watched a few highlights. It's just goofy watching them dribble around and then like do layups. <laughs> it's like you can't even reach the rim. Like the ball is tiny. Like they're Imagine all Imagine a WNBA jams video game. <laughs> they said they're going to end up making that. <laughs> it's just layups, but the ball's on fire. Right, exactly. Layup. You can still heat up and shit. I'm sorry. It sounds so mean. It sounds it's crazy, like... but it's 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 really it's goofy it, it looks goofy it's the same thing when you watch wrestling like there's there's been the whole genesis of the women's revolution in wrestling where they're you know main eventing cards and things like that but when you watch them like hit the ropes with less momentum and their slams have less momentum it's just a physics thing yeah. like it just doesn't have the same and impact they're little they're tiny they're like, little nice cute little girls wcw they would lower the ropes yeah sure to make people look taller All right it's like when I, they I should watch, do that. Yeah, for women's wrestling, they a whole new ring crew comes out and puts the because they look so small. It's I, just it, it's nuts that we have to. It's like everyone just has has agreed to pretend that this is legit. Yeah, like put it this way: if there was a MB, if there was a basketball league where all the guys were five seven, five eight, one hundred and fifty pounds, it would fucking tank. Yeah. Nobody would fucking watch oh, it. Absolutely. If they used the smaller ball and none of them could dunk, it'd be like, why are they making this leap? I always forget about the smaller ball. Yeah, why? the ball. Right. Why? Was your hand smaller? I guess that's it. What about the players that are smaller than Brittany Griner, who's... The ball being smaller is nuts because they don't make the hoop smaller. Yeah. I mean, what the fuck? Isn't, doesn't that go against, like, equality? And... I might be able to ball out in the w dude you can probably palm the ball <laughs> it's like the size of a fucking softball I have little hands it's like the size of a softball dude but the rim is giant <laughs> it's the size of a softball they make, they make, they make the rims bigger <laughs> the rims are like those circus fucking big bertha rims at skateland dude they're, oh, they're yeah. huge but yeah they use like a softball size basketball 
They dribble it around. The three point line is closer. <laughs> they have a five point line instead. No way. All right. It was weird because there was a there was a they were adding like this racial element to it because a bunch of players on Chicago and of course it's Chicago. Chirac. Angel Reese. Yeah, there's a bunch of black girls on Chicago and like they were like hard fouling Caitlin Clark, who looks like CM Punk from 2007. She does, and she gets up after getting fouled and she's like, right. And they and were like, like, she did get, she got rocked. But they were adding like this weird like, there's always that like thug. When people start yeah. saying thug, you know what they mean. Yeah. That was happening a little bit. So that's always entertaining to watch people talk about race in a very muted, non-obvious way and try and see if they can skirt their way around it. But I don't know. If I'm going to, like, if they make it where Caitlin Clark's, like, the hero in these, like, black girls on Chicago are the big villains and they're fucking trying to knock her out, that almost makes me want to take a peek, kind of. Like, let's see yeah. if she can survive the gauntlet. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's an interesting little thing, but she's like the Larry Bird of the WNBA. Right? Exactly. Yeah, and she I I keep seeing like Dave Portney tweeting about the WNBA oh. and several other big time guys like no flop tweeting about it as if they're really watching it. Yeah. It's like, dude, I know you're not fucking watching yeah, this. You're only watching the clips. There's no way. You're not fucking sitting back watching. It. And if you are, you're doing it so that you can say that you watched it. Yeah. It's like it's it's well. It's, there's probably a deal worked out with like right Barstool. where they're there paying them be. out, yeah, to like promote it. Any any company like that that puts out a tweet is doing it for a reason. I would have to agree. I would I would I would venture to think that everybody promoting it is on the payroll yeah. on some fucking level. And the and, and the NBA pays the WNBA's payroll, right? Like if the NBA didn't pay for the league, it would just fold. Yeah. Because they don't make enough money. Right. See, you, you could go see them at the Y. That's the other thing, too, and, <laughs> at the Y. So, like, that was always the big argument when, like, anytime World Cup season comes around, there's always that argument about, like, the pay gap between the men's and women's Oh, team. my God. And it's so simple to solve because it's just like, well, who brings in more revenue, right? And that's always... Yeah, why would I get paid more than someone who brings more exactly. money like, If you work somewhere and you, and like, let's say we're both sales guys. I bring in 500k worth of business and you bring in 100k like I should get a bigger commission right yeah. so it like works the same way like it really if you break it down to that level it really doesn't even have anything to do with gender like if the women's world cup drew on that level they should make more money do you ever hear the argument that women don't support women 100% and yeah. what women what girls do you know personally that watch the WNBA no my fiance can't name a single athlete no I mean they <laughs> probably, have like one. there's women don't want to watch women play sports neither do men so it's just like there's really no target audience for it i mean sorry to be harsh like that but it's just like i respect the fact that they play like if they want to have a league and shit that's fine there's nothing wrong with that like they can play just like we can go play at willow park and it's, yeah they can meet us at willow exactly we can dunk on chicago them. chicago sky man it's Come no problem to willow dude. park <laughs> exactly park. we'll I'll, I'll face them anytime we'll get three others we'll get ethan randall and sheezy we'll probably beat them dude nah, not sheezy no, we gotta have. Sheezy. We gotta have a big. He's probably man. the best. I know he is. He's probably the best player that Let's we know. About. Well, who's a big man we can use? Um, Dom Fautier. Or something? Oh yeah, we'll pull him out of retirement. <laughs> yeah, can't, no way to That'd get a hold of him. Fucking hilarious. I'm sure we can find him on Facebook, um, which is just a, a wasteland now. I don't have Facebook. Good move. I, I jumped back on a, a, like a week ago, and I've been logging in like mainly to go in the BBG, the Bring Back Group. Um, and also just to like see what's going on because I haven't been on there in so long. My my profile was inactive. Facebook is a wasteland, but so is everything now. Like Twitter's a wasteland because it's just nuts and nobody's on it. And then Instagram is just annoying because it's just people like it's, flexing it, and people yeah. like. I'm 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 over it. I think we're like evolving past. Yeah, I don't have Instagram either. We're like we're moving into a new realm of time where it's like we don't need that shit anymore. Like anytime I see somebody post something on Instagram that's like a very typical Instagram post, I'm like, dude, this is so like 2014. Yeah, what you're doing? I don't here. need to have my shirt off. Right? Like, why I'll are you post doing a picture this? Picture the sky with like leaves or something. Like that's where I'm at. That's a cooler but thing. To I put think. like to, to like flex or like. I hate. I've always hated people that like promote their kids too much. Yeah, yeah, not, not just at all. Yeah, too much. Because there's people that are like, I'm hanging with my kid, and you see the kid, and it's like, it's like why your kid doesn't even know what you're doing. Yeah, are, like you're is just your kid for likes? Is your kid okay? 
yeah, with like being on. Me. Like you shouldn't be like exploiting your kid. There's a lot. But people exploit everything for some type of likes. Like anytime there's some sort of social movement that's like the Black uh, Lives Matter. That we remember. It. Let's go. Remember be- the Black Square. Absolutely. Let's go four years ago. Okay, there was people posting black squares. There was people posting them holding signs at marches after George Floyd. I got news for you. None of that shit has gone away. Everything's the same now. But I don't see any of those people talking about racial equality, talking about George Floyd, talking about this, that, and the other. It's just like it was the chic thing to do at the time, the cause de jour of the moment. And now that it's moved on to something else, they're not with it. It's like if you were really down for the cause, if you were a freedom fighter, you'd be all about it 24 fucking 7. Yeah. No. And they totally weren't. And it's it trendy. Was, it was it. so transparent, and it's it's fucking sickening. You ever see a... There's a nail place in Lockport in the plaza where Frankie's is. Oh, really? Yeah, and it's called Trendy Nail Salon. <laughs> That's dope. Like, come on. That's like, fucking try dope. Try a little harder. No, but, you know, like, usually it's like... Um, they're just saying outright, like they're just yeah, fucking like, calling it like it is. This shit's trendy. Trendy nail shop, dude. Yeah, dude, it's so funny. I, I mean. kind of fuck with that. <laughs> well, I yeah, might roll straight up straight to the point and blunt. I've been looking for maybe getting another pedicure. Have you ever gotten a pedicure? I have never. I don't even. Sh- I've never shown my feet. <laughs> never shown my feet. <laughs> Probably not in like twenty years. That's hilarious. I got one pedicure. I went with Kate to. We she took me and, and got made me get a pedicure, and it was honestly amazing. Um, is it weird? It's a little weird because there's like an Asian lady like by your feet, like scrubbing your feet, and oh. but but it feels really good. And then they put like this, like so your nails get all nice, and then they put like this like glossy finish on your nails that looks kind of like metrosexual, but it's like kind of cool. Like uh, it just it was really relaxing and it felt really good. How long does it last? until like probably like a week or two okay it's not it's not any it doesn't last a long time yeah i'd never have an event to go to where i'm like you can only go to a girl or go with a girl that's the only way you could do it yeah but like after i like i'd have no reason like i'm just well if you're like showing off your toenails then you're kind (laughs) of you're kind of crossing the sus line in my opinion yeah um so fuck it let's fucking talk about donald trump because i just think i want to i just want to talk about him i have this feeling that and I, I, I noticed this last night when I when I thought about the fact that just Donald Trump was on impulsive and then you sent me that thing that Jano said too, where it looked like he was maybe towing the line not hating Trump. <laughs> right. It's like is something happening right now where Trump is becoming like cool? I th- absolutely. Because even my reaction, like I texted you the other day and I was like, Hey, I watched this fucking rally and this guy's fucking hilarious. And I've always pretty much thought he was hilarious, but it's like I'm feeling like, think about it. Let's rewind to 2020. Logan Paul would never fucking have Trump on his podcast. No, remember he did that big speech. Anti-Trump. Yeah. Like, if you had Trump on your podcast, that's like career fucking suicide. So something has definitely happened over the last four years where you can do that now, and it's not a big deal. I just, what I hope is that Trump isn't going to become, like, where all the fucking goofballs like him. Yeah, yeah. I'm worried about because that, that could too. go that way, but there's no like for Biden. Like if you see a Biden supporter, it's like why, and then they'll never they'll give you those. like reasons, but you right. you won't. You'll just be like eh. with Biden. I feel like he got basically elected just because they didn't want Trump. Like it was more about Trump than yeah. Biden. Biden got like, 81 million votes. The most in history. Did he really? Yes. And I think that's all a result of anti-Trump. I, that was all people saying, fuck Trump. We cannot have another Trump. We do not want another Trump. Even in this situation that we're in right now talking about this, there's still that hesitance of me to like endorse Trump. Because what I don't want, as funny as I think he is, and I'm not a political by any means. I don't give a fuck. I've never voted. I probably never will. I do not give a single fuck. I really just don't. But the thing about it is like I don't want to be associated with, with all the fucking idiots yeah, who do like him. But at the same time, I would never ride with Biden for the same reason because there's just as many fucking idiots, in my opinion. Who are the worst idiots? I don't know. Like, I feel like either way, I don't know. I just feel like to get involved on the level 
where you're actually even picking a side is crazy. Like for me, I like to just like, I almost consider it where like I'm just in the crowd watching a spectacle. Yeah. And it's like, I'm just rooting for crazy, funny shit Trump's to more entertaining Way than Way more. Biden. Like yeah. if, if Trump's in office, funnier, crazier Dude, he, he shit will happen. he was tweeting happen. about North Korea, like little rocket man. Exactly. Like that's And then he met him and he was the first president to ever go into North Korea. <laughs> that's better. Like what type of what kind of diplomacy ever, is that? Since Biden's been president, I've heard virtually nothing about anything. Which is no news is a, is good news. I guess a lot of the time, I guess. But like I do if I'm gonna be inundated with any sort of political news or you know, discourse, I want it to be entertaining and funny. I'm really keyed up for these debates, dude. Like, I, I do oh think... Oh, my God. I think Trump is going to fucking rock his ass. Dude. Because it doesn't look like Biden even knows where he is, whereas Trump is very coherent, very on the ball. Like, he knows what he wants to say. He knows what he wants to do. The stipulation match. Yes, yes. Very much so. He, yeah, Trump won't debate Biden. Well, he wouldn't. They can't be sitting. It's a, Unless they were standing. It's yeah. a last man standing match. <laughs> they only do it if And that standing. is so petty and funny. Right, which is hilarious. Imagine if, like, you... Like I knew you were like having trouble walking around. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I'll talk to him if he stands right. the we whole time. We cannot sit. That How fun? I mean, that's so funny. It's amazing, and so I appreciate that part of it. He is. There's something. I there's something about his look that drives me nuts. Like I don't know what he's doing. Like I don't know what the the hair is. Like there's like a mask going on with a uh, Biden. They say. That there's like oh, an yeah. actor that wears a mask. Biden looks like he's getting Botox. I saw a rest in peace Joe Biden thing from like three years ago. And then like there's an actor playing him now that throws on a mask. He <laughs> looks like he, his face is looking very fake. But I think they got him like, I think they got That's him what, like Adderall up. Did you ever see Trump go, um, yeah, Biden said he'd take me out behind this barn or whatever. And then Biden, or Trump goes. And starts throwing punches. He goes, I hit him right in that fake nose. <laughs> That's the shit. That's the shit that I love when he says the shit that people normally don't say. Like there were so many moments like that on on whatever I watched where he just like he just said it. Whereas like someone like Biden or any other candidate, they're so calculated with what they say. And I feel like Trump actually there's a there's a genuineness and a rawness to him where he's just like he really whether good or bad whether people like it or not he's going to say some crazy shit you remember you sent me a clip the other day about the ice rink in new york city yeah that was an amazing okay story. so but the funny part was is trump goes so i called the montreal canadian right I why did, wouldn't I did you just job. call the hockey team that's that right was down nearby? The road. Right. No, you had to call the Canadian they, yeah. hockey team, and that's such a good sales thing. It's like, oh, he called Canada because he wanted right. the experts. Even it's though even all better. the arenas are the right. same, it's even better. It's even <laughs> yeah. next level. Because, like, yes, sure, the Boston Bruins they would know how to do a rink, but who would know even better than them? The Canadian yeah, the rink so much better. That would be even next level shit. So I don't know. I I oh, I don't think it's enough. That will get me in the booth because I just I feel like New York's gonna be blue. I don't think there's any way around that. Yeah. I mean, I guess if everybody thought like me, then yes, of course, nothing will change. But for me, it's like I still, as much as I will enjoy Trump and think he's fucking hilarious, I don't want to be involved and I don't want to be responsible. Well, you know what Trump's trying to do? He's campaigning in all these states. I think, and I haven't heard this said before. I think he's trying to win the popular vote in that way because no Republican ever wins that. Right. So, well, maybe Reagan. Because the, yeah, right. Okay. But, and Reagan, I, I, my grandpa told me, I didn't know this, but he said Reagan was the last Republican to win New York as well. Yeah. Is that he, true? he won every state but one, I believe, against Michael Dukasis. That's crazy. Um, in 1988, I want to say. At, well, or 84. But, anyways, I think Trump wants to win the popular vote that way. If he loses the election, he can bitch about it. Oh, he'll definitely want that. He'll definitely because want. Because why about would it. you campaign in the Bronx? You know, New York. You know, you're not gonna. Right. That's yeah. what I mean. It's like you know, you're not. But it's like it's crazy because he still had a whole fucking rally of people that were down for the cause. Yeah. So it's like the people are there. They're just like spread out or whatever the fuck. I don't really know. I I don't keep tabs on political shit whatsoever. But I do gotta say. The election, uh, 2020, I, I didn't, I totally didn't give a fuck. 2016 was a fun one because it was Hillary versus Trump. So you got the first potential oh, woman yeah. versus this just crazy. And that was a time when it seemed like it was 
for sure set in stone that Hillary Clinton was winning. Because you'd be in jail. I had no possible... I was giving Trump a 0% chance. It looked like a complete fallacy to me. And maybe that's just me not having a pulse on what was really going on. No, you're not alone. I mean, it, it looked like to me that it was set up... I voted for Hillary. There you go. It looked like it was set up where Trump was just like a waste of a guy because they knew Hillary was going to win. And when Trump won that night, it was like, oh, my God. You know They're the, really going to have to go through with this. You know like, what the best part is? Hillary was in a building that Trump owned that it had a glass Yeah, he mentioned that. The about glass ceiling. Owning the glass ceiling. Yeah. yeah. And then he didn't thought, work out for. Her. Yeah, he dude. That, he's yeah. such dude. He could roast. He's good at roasting. The teleprompter roast. That was great. Biden. Yes, he's he's a great roast. I mean, especially on the level of like when you when you talk about politicians, they're usually so calculated and in a box and weak, and they don't say anything. And then he's out here just like throwing fucking fireballs at people. So it's like his level <laughs> is so really much is. crazier than everybody else. That's why I'm excited to like. If this debate, if this last man standing debate thing happens, I'm excited oh, to see like what it'll be ref, like. like a I know, real ref. but it's just it's just weird because I do sense this weird like cultural thing happening where it's like before you couldn't even say like Trump's name without feeling like I don't want anyone to think that I like him. Like I don't. I hope yeah, nobody thinks yeah. I like him. Well, like, he made a good point, but I hate the guy. Exactly. Like you had to come out and say that right away, which is really so stupid if you think about it. Like he's just a fucking dude. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know because again, for me, it's mostly ignorance. But what did he ever really do that was so hateable? I mean, grab him by the pussy. That was pretty nuts. That's pretty funny, though. It, it is funny. Don't get me wrong. That is that. Is, I mean, you know what's the funniest part is that he got caught saying that, like right before the election, and then still won the election. Yeah. Like you would think if you well, got they caught, called it locker room talk. That's fucking. Which insane. I I've been in locker rooms. I've you never have. said that. I've never. But been, you've never, heard shitty. Oh yeah. Things well, that people's. just the way guys talk about girls. If yeah. girls heard everything we said, we would all be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> none, of, none of them would like any of us. Like the shit that we, you'll you'll find this on my channel, but um, I just recently had an, an, an interesting thing that happened to me where I was talking with my gr group chat of the boys and I was talking to a girl at the same time and the, the messages got mixed. And I ended up sending a message to the girl that was meant for the group chat. And it was very exposing and oh very my. Uh, like w the way that we speak about things like that. Like, I got to be honest, I would never say to grab anyone by the pussy. That thought would never enter my mind. But a comedian would, though. You do say crazy shit about like their body. It just like shit that you don't want to know about. Like you don't want to know what really goes on in the raw group chat. Trust me. You don't want to know. It's not good. For you. For us, it's funny. But when you're in the locker room environment or a guy environment, it's it's no hold barred. Yeah. Anything goes. I mean, think about who who's that wrestler? Like X Pac? One, two, three kid. He used to like take a shit. <laughs> in in like, Sonny's bag? Yeah. Yeah. Well that was That's worse than anything. I That's way worse. Said. Imagine opening your gym bag and there's a steaming log in it. Ugh. Yeah, see, that's we're talking about the nineties now, so yeah, now we're going sorry. back to a whole different era of references pranks. are a little different. Yeah, a whole different uh era of crazy shit. But um yeah, I mean it's just uh there's a certain there's a certain level of confidentiality and comfortableness that you feel and expect when you're doing guy talk. You don't ever think you're going to be exposed, right? And you don't, you wouldn't want to be exposed because it's sick and fucking it's twisted. It's like you, when those deviant. people catch these like child predators at like Walmart, All right? And then they like show them what they said, right? It's like they almost can't even believe. I didn't say that. That they were saying that to kids and shit like that. What was her age? 
Uh, she said 17. No, it says 13. It says right here, 12. It <laughs> says it right fucking here. It, and it's so funny because you, like, it's hard because you want to put yourself in, like, the person, like, what would I, how would I lie about this? Right, like, this? how would I react to the situation? But then at the same time, it's like, well, I never would be in it, right? right so, like, yeah. I can't even hypothetically. So you feel guilty about, right, like, you already yeah. feel guilty about hypothetically sending messages that you would never send. <laughs> the same thing happens to me when I say shit, like, with, like, Dalia among uh, Dalia and all the other people who've been like me too and shit like that. I'm very my style and approach system is very laid back and like I don't like I don't cat call girls. I don't like slap girls asses. I don't like I barely even compliment girls. Like I barely even ask girls out. Like I don't I don't like say things out loud that would make a girl uncomfortable. And it's not because I'm like this great guy and like this awesome human being. It's mainly because I'd be too embarrassed if it like went wrong. Yeah. So I just don't do shit like that. So like when I hear about people like sending these wacky DMs or like sending dick pics or like doing this crazy shit, it's almost like I almost feel the same way about that where it's like I'm wonder I have this weird feeling like wondering how I would handle that, but then I have this like guilt of like what it would be like to get busted for something like that. Cause that would be my biggest fear. It's like if I was gonna send a girl some wacky, outlandish shit, I would instantly be thinking, like, well, what if she shows this to everybody at yeah. some point? I can't you know, do this. But like it, if imagine being a teenager now. Yeah, that's that's wild, and, wild like, west. You know, shit. you're linking up, you're like you're seventeen, eighteen, and you're talking to like a girl and you're snapping back and forth. And then you go to school, and the girl told everybody. Oh, man. Is there anything worse? Ooh. I honestly feel bad for kids on some level today because they're dealing with that on a different level. I, I, I think, like, if you did something fucked up in school back in the day, like, yeah, word got around. But, like, now word would get around so fast. Like, you could fuck up in fifth period, and by sixth period, everybody yeah. knows you're a fucking idiot at that point. Ooh. It's scary for you kids out there, man. Poor bastards. Wow. I don't know. I mean, it's just... the. It's one of the drawbacks of... I, I think the kids kind of... Me and Shufelt were talking about this when I linked up with him a couple weeks ago. Like, I think kids are getting robbed of certain innocence and enjoyability like let's think about when we hung out when we were kids all right like let's go back to like the church hockey days when we would play street hockey at the church we would all somehow meet up like either it was through aol instant messenger or we would call each other on the phone figure out where we're gonna meet we'd all meet there we'd all hang out and then we would go do something together at no point through any of that were we ever concerned with or even thought about what anyone else was doing we were never concerned with showing everybody what we were doing. And it was such an organic, live-in-the-moment type of fun. Yeah. Everybody we wanted to know was there. Was there. Yeah. And if they weren't, it was just like, all right, they're not there. Like It, it was never about, like, we got to do this, and then we all got to like show everyone that we did this. And, well, what's everybody else doing? Like, Is there something better going on right no, now? No, we, we were the doing? ones that were shoehorning like the... Oh, everyone's doing that. So everyone else, if they found out, they'd be like, that's the cool thing. That's to jump on that. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that there's got to be an element of that missing from the youth today because, like, I mean, you got to figure we were online on AIM and shit, but to a much lesser degree where we almost used AIM as like text messaging, basically. Yeah. But now it's like with Instagram and with Snapchat and with fucking Twitter and Facebook and all the other bullshit, TikTok and whatever the fuck else they're doing nowadays. There's just a lot of pressure to like have a persona and like always look like you have bullshit going on and like. But you know what's even funnier is people will be they'll use it the opposite way and they'll do like. I I don't do anything. Yeah, right. They'll use it as like a sad sack yeah. story. Yeah. That's and a then, awful move, by the way. Nobody wants to see that. Yeah. You cannot I don't, I don't. you don't get sympathy. I want to see someone having fun, but I don't want them to overwhelm me if I were to ever hang out with them. I don't want to be like, Oh, I'm not going to the zoo today. I don't want them <laughs> like, trying want to so hard. Yeah. Ever with anything. Like but I people don't... have this natural energy about them. Some people can just do whatever. They Some can... people are naturally wild like that and they just do all kinds of crazy shit. Some people it's like they're putting on a show all the time and there's like this disingenuous factor that really drives me fucking crazy. 
it's just I, I do get the sense that a lot of times what we see now when people are doing things, it goes back to what you're talking about with, with after the George Floyd thing, when people were taking pictures, like holding signs and shit, like it's so much less about what they're really doing and what they're really living. And it's more about the perception of what they want to present. Yeah. And it's such a fake, marketing, vapid way to live. It's like, dude, you're, you're not famous. Like, what do you have, like 500 yeah, I, followers? Yeah. Like, you're just a person that I know from high school. There's like, people in Lockport that have, like, a th- like 2,000 followers. It's like, it's dude, like, you're not famous. Like you. No, you're famous in Lockport. Well, not even. Everybody's famous in Lockport. Who don't we know? Yeah. That's you know what I mean? Point. Like, we know everybody knows everybody. So it's like, do, you don't have to act like you have to have a persona. Like, you're nobody expects anything from you. Nobody gives a fuck. It's like, I don't know. I, like, I am at the point in my life where... I mean, granted, like doing that, I love uploading to my YouTube because it's generally seen by either people that I don't know or people that I didn't know they watched it because I don't know who follows me on YouTube. But like uploading shit on the other networks, it just feels fucking cringe because I don't, I don't even want anybody to know what I'm doing. YouTube's a goat, first of all. YouTube's the greatest. I mean, if it wasn't for YouTube, I would have tapped out a long fucking time ago. YouTube is the basis on which you kind of. I mean, like, I don't have cable. I don't know if you... You don't have cable either, right? No. So it's streaming just like... Platform. That's your go-to, right? Like, that's just, like, your thing. Um, yeah, YouTube kind of carries now. Like, it just... It took over everything, and... I don't know. Like, that's, that's the other weird part about the way things are now. It's like, everything's so fragmented. Like, whereas before, when everybody was watching TV, watching cable and shit like that, it's like there'd be, like, big events that everybody watched and everybody would talk yeah. about. But now it's like everybody's so in their own lane doing their own bullshit. Yeah, I'm going to watch Manifest today. Right. Like, And people do seasons. So, like, my Ashley, for instance, if she starts a show... There's no stopping her. Right. So just crush it. Yeah. Well, I'll do the same thing. Like, if I'm going to then watch I'll them. sit there and I'll be like, dude, it's episode five. I, I can't keep up. So I'll just go do my own thing. It makes you think, too, because it's like we weren't we weren't really meant. Well, we weren't really meant to watch TV at all as human beings, but like we weren't really meant to like absorb a whole series in like a sitting. Yeah. On the same token, like when it comes back to YouTube and shit like that, I think about this all the time. Like when I was a kid. I remember there were times where I would like tape, I would tape the radio, right? Because there'd be like hit songs out, like fucking Santana and Rob Thomas would be out and they would play it on Kiss 98.5, but I didn't have a way to listen to it. So I'd be listening to the radio and I'd have a tape in the tape deck and if it came on the radio, I'd record it so I could listen back to it again and again. Nowadays, obviously this goes without saying, but you can just get anything you want right away. Like, yeah. okay, you have a nostalgic thought. You miss watching Nickelodeon Guts. Go on YouTube. Guarantee they have every season I of Guts. I watched Rocco's Modern Life earlier today. Bet they have all of it. Any song yeah. you think of, boom, you pull it up right away. Any show you think of, any interview you think of, any fucking ev- thing that's ever happened that's ever been recorded, you can just pull it right away. And it was so much different when we couldn't because it just made shit more special. Like when you have everything at your fingertips all the time and endless options, I feel like there's like a paralysis that comes with that because you almost don't even know. It just nothing feel. There's a certain energy that's lost from that where I don't know, even something you don't have to work for it, right? You put no effort in everything's just conveniently right there. Like if you go back to the days when there was like Hollywood video and blockbuster and shit, and a new game would come out. You'd go to the store to rent the fucking game, and it would be out. Three days or five days. That, or even a one day it if it was be brand live. new. <laughs> Facing time, right? Yeah. So you're fucking... You, I remember there's this one summer where I went to the the blockbuster that was in Tops. There was a weird random blockbuster in Tops for a little while. That. I went there to rent NHL 2001 on PS2, and it took me like four fucking months to get it because every time I would go there, they only had one copy. Every time I would go there, it'd be gone. And I would rush to the case. I'd see the case and there'd be nothing behind it. would be like, oh, fuck. Oh, the yeah. fucking day that I walked in and it was there was the most fucking lit, craziest. Like, I remember the feeling of adrenaline, dude, just like seeing it there and being able to play it. Whereas now anything that comes out, you just download it on your fucking PS5 or PS4 yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I could get it out of my phone. Instantly. Yeah. No waiting, what no wanting. What was that game? I think before we actually met each other, we did a tournament at Hollywood Video. 
And Street. I think you beat me, and really? I got really pissed because I thought that you were screen peeking. Fuck, dude. I don't remember that. I don't remember me. You don't remember that at all? I don't remember all? playing you It was you all. and I in the finals, I believe. Really? Yeah. I don't remember that. I played in a bunch do of Do you tournaments. remember the tournament? I played in a bunch of tournaments there. So I, remember I do you. remember some of I them. I remember you from before I even knew you, and I was like, this kid's screen peek. That's crazy. Though. And I never screen peek, by the way. That's not something I do. Ah, I don't fucking Admit do. it now, no, man. No, <laughs> I do. I do not. Hand it's on hard the to fucking even, like, because everything, it's like four plays, and they're blinking anyway. So I get it now, but I remember leaving like, that... Kid. Are you sure that was me? I sw- I know it was you. That's crazy. So I don't think Did I Did you win it? I won. The only tournament I ever won at Game Crazy was the NFL Street that, original tournament. That was the... You beat me. That's nuts because I didn't even know I that you I thought I brought that up you. to you before. No, I didn't even know that you were you. Yeah, I time. made it to the finals. I couldn't believe it. And then I faced this guy. Wow. And he screen peeked me. I time. did win that tourney. So, yeah, if that was the one, then we definitely. How would I come out with that out of nowhere? No, yeah, I don't think you're making it up. I just think it's so nuts because I've never, we've never talked about that. And also, I never knew that that was you. Yeah, it was I me. knew I won it, but I never knew that that was you. Yeah, you beat me. Fuck. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. That's game I crazy. Ready for my. Remember those little screens and the little controller. Yeah, they had really small screens yeah. there, like like stations where you'd play at. Even something like that is so cool. Like, there's that picture of us. I wish I could find the picture, dude. You know what sucks is like MySpace got like I deleted. Know. I can't find any of my old. None photos. of the photos are. Yeah. They didn't. They didn't last, and I never saved them all. But I don't have my login from. Fuck 20. no. I don't even think you can log in. I think all the profiles got deleted. But there was a picture of me, you, and Jano at the front of the line at Game Crazy. No way. Waiting for Madden. Yeah. We're all at the very front of the line. Everyone that pre-ordered it showed up that day, and it's all of us like going like this. And the guy, the fat guy from Game Crazy took the picture, and we're the first ones in line to get Madden at midnight. It's such a good picture, and oh. I'll never, we'll never have it again. Like, we'll never be able to get that photo again. We'll have to recreate it. Yeah, I know. I wish. The, is Game Crazy even a thing anymore? Fuck no. It's like a lens works place or something. Every video game thing is like... I think this is going to be true with car salesmen, too. I think everyone's going to start going online. Yeah, probably. Like, Everything is going to go that fucking way. Because, I, I mean, even... I was talking to Jimmy the other day, and he was, like, talking about taking out ads for his fucking paint place. And, like, he took out an ad and put it in the... Lockport fucking saver like yeah, print who ad. Reads that? It's like, dude, nobody's reading that. Like, you have to have a fucking website and shit. The like, last time someone read that, it was Jano, <laughs> and he had a seizure immediately after. Of course, I'm that's not what kidding. he does. And sorry, Jano, I love you. Right, he was on Salvia but Debonorum. You were reading the paper before your seizure. This Lockport saver, but it's like, yeah, dude, like things have moved away. Like, I'm surprised they even still print those. Like, what a waste of trees. Wait, to me, yeah, if I right. fucking go in my mailbox and see the Lockport Saver, it goes right in the trash. I get mad when I get any mail. Me too. Why do they? How do they have my fucking address to like send me all this yeah, bullshit? Just text me. I like guess. I go out there and my mailbox is full of shit. Like the auto trader, the fucking yeah. It's not nineteen seven. Like, dude, I don't want this. Like, don't give. Don't take me off. Unsubscribe. Right, and yeah, you're wasting shit. It's fucking lame. That's so, yeah. funny. I'm going to complain to the city next time they send me. Yeah, we need to go to a town hall. Oh, my hall. God. I got a bill in the mail the other day from Pennsylvania. I, really? Uh, what for? So th- you don't have to pay for tolls anymore, apparently. They just take They got a rid picture. of cash, finally. They take a picture. And then, then you pay for it later. You a bill. Yeah, so yep, you pay and for I it later. And I was like, why the fuck are they sending me a toll? From when you went and picked up Jano, probably. And now I don't want to, but now if I don't, even though it's 17 You'll bucks, get like a ticket or something. Or my license something will be cheap. suspended. Yeah. And- yeah, it's I fucked up, it. dude. Cash is going by the wayside. Everything's fucking going by the wayside. It's fucking over. I hate it. Did you see Steve-O got a tattoo of a dick on his face? I didn't see that, but... Dude, so basically, he had Post Malone, like, do a tattoo of a oh. dick. This is what we need to do, okay? This is what we need to do. All of us, combined. All of society. This is what we need to do. When someone does something like that, and I know I just broke the rule, but it's not a rule yet. All of us in on earth need to not talk about it. Do not share a story of it. Do not post it on TMZ. Don't show pic. Don't like his Instagram. Don't share it. Don't talk about it with your friends. Whenever someone does something that's specifically meant to drive engagement and get clout, all of us by this point in 2024 should have the wherewithal and insight to ignore it and not give them what they right. want. 
Exactly. Imagine if Steve-O got a tattoo of a dick on his face and no one talked about it. That would be That would be the greatest amazing. fucking thing of all time. Yeah, I got this. I can't stand it. It looks so stupid. Static dude. electricity voice. Yeah, it really is. How can anyone listen to his Raspy, podcast? Raspy, like, you know that shit that, like, you pull, when you pull out the ceiling, there's, like, that pink shit? Yeah, it's yeah, It's like yeah. it's not, like, lining his throat. He's fucking, like... And Post Malone, what are you doing, dude? Yeah, what's you up? You can't with... tattoo a dick on somebody's face. Oh. You can't do that. That's not something that you can S- do. Speaking of Post Malone, he went straight country. Post Malone's a straight. And so did MGK. Well, uh, not straight, but MGK. MGK went country, straight. So. Is he really? Yeah. He put Nothing out Nowhere is doing country, too. I bet there must be a country wave. Well, it's like the white rapper. I mean, think about like Tim McGraw and Nelly yeah. back 20 years ago. And you know what's crazy about it, too, is like country music still sells. Like there's country fans in the South who like literally like buy CDs. That's insane. And they like stream. So like these guys are probably thinking like, well, nobody's fucking paying for music anymore. Like what if I just go country? I'm sure I can sell yeah. way fucking more. It's marketing. It's fucking goofy, dude. I'm so like, sick of I thought about it. I'm like, once I'm too old to even like try to write music, I'm just never too co- old to do country. You're never too old. If anything, yeah. you're too young. Yeah, I've, you can be 60 and put out a new country album and it'll hit. I'm so fucking sick of everyone's money-making schemes. Everyone really has them. My ner- it's so fucking annoying. It's so transparent. I'm just so tired of it. Because, like, we're so savvy now. Like, we've been on the internet for so long, and we've been viewing this all happen. So we know when someone's fucking with us and trying to sell us some bullshit. So it's like, you're not fooling anybody with your ad styles anymore. We all know. And I'm just Yeah, it just breaks it. out. Imagine if right now we just went, hey, man. Right. The Bat Blue's oh, been a, one of the best things the that ever happened. The crispiest, tastiest. Yeah, it's just like, dude. Yeah, and we're not trying to sell you a product here, but we do recommend. <laughs> but it is the greatest, and it is available now and at all stores. And then there's a cheap cut where it's like, yeah, and then we said, my boss said it right back. Right, it goes right back to what we were talking about. Oh, that's the Logan Paul. I've had it. Those two are, those two are the worst. Those two are the fucking worst. I didn't even know about Jake Paul's new deodorant brand which oh is available in walmart's everywhere w. it's like dude those guys that was like their end goal was to get a product in walmart like that's like the ultimate scummy. but it's like don't you have enough money right why do you need more why do you why do you if i had a hundred million do- well i don't know how much they have say i had 20 mil i'd be like i'm good and they have i so don't need many, to do anything they else. have so many like ongoing revenue streams already they don't need W. They don't need it. Jake Paul doesn't need to have deodorant in Walmart. He doesn't fucking need it. But he does it anyway. And it's like, dude, just when I start liking these guys again, they do something yeah. fucked up. Where it's well, like, Logan would be suicidal if he didn't have like money coming. If he right. retired now, he'd be dead in five and years. And it's insane because like Prime is everywhere. You can't go anywhere without seeing Prime. It's, it's I don't like it. I don't like it either. I tried it once. I didn't fucking like it. You know what really bugs me the most? Of anything Prime involved, there's now on the WWE ring every show they do a Prime bottle in the center of the fucking That's canvas. That's insane. They like cave do them. Isn't that fucked up? Like that used to be sacred fucking. And there's one on the turnbuckles too, the top turnbuckle. Well, yeah, I guess, but ads are becoming more of a thing. Like you know how in yeah. the NHL like the helmets now have ads, and on I them. hate that. But they've been slowly implementing that into everything. But to see the canvas have a Prime bottle right, on it, a special it's like canvas. Logan. It's like Logan's not even like signed to them. It's like they're signed to logan yeah like logan's like taking the wwe for a ride yeah and like helping them out. well he definitely worked some things out in his contract for sure so yeah he's still allowed to do whatever he wants he still gets pri- you know the prime th- it's just but can i ask you who do you think wins in a boxing match jake yeah same i, I think jake beats logan and i think i think brutally i think logan is so insanely jealous of jake yeah. that it's like palpable like because Logan's doing the WWE thing, and he's, he's by the way, really fucking good at it. And also, like, he's almost, like, born for it. Because he's such a naturally charismatic, naturally athletic, natural heat-seeking magnet type of guy. And he's so good at it. But I know in his mind that he cannot reconcile the fact that he does fake fights and Jake does real fights. Yeah. Because he wants to be tough. He and has a big real... brothers. And... Exactly. Imagine if you and Carson were both boxers. Right. And, and to be honest with you... With well, me you are Car- a boxer, but... I... Was a boxer. But if me and Carson were both fighters and he did boxing and I did WWE, 
I would be happy that I'm doing WWE. Like I'd be, I would think it's so cool that I'm the U.S. champion and all this shit. But I know Logan, he didn't grow up a pro wrestling fan, no. so he doesn't look at it that way. Like that's a way for him to make money. But in his mind, it's lesser than because it's fucking I think fake. I'd love a tag team. That, that would be amazing. Did, I you, would, did you see Uncle Howdy's debut? Here? Yeah, I saw that. I I think that I Left don't know. a lot to be desired. Yeah, and I mean, should you really be doing that? I mean, be Bray own, Wyatt's yeah. legitimately dead. Like, we don't know if he wanted this. Or maybe he did. Maybe he like said that he wanted that to happen. Man, that's cool. But. I bet they had to talk to that guy or. Bro Dallas, whatever his really Yeah, is. and of course he's going to be down for it. Like he hasn't worked on TV in forever. I I don't I don't watch Raw anymore. I don't watch regularly. I knew that once Cody won, Cody Rhodes that is not Cody Butler. I knew that once he won the title, that things would dip, because it's always more fun to watch the chase than the face be champion. Like the face being the actual champion is kind of boring. The face going after the top dog villain. Yeah. Roman, that's exciting, right? Because you can stack the odds it, against and then them. get screwed over out of your belt. Exactly. So they're going to have to move that over to a heel again at some point. But I just think that um, I don't know. I don't. I'm not engaged to it on the level anymore. Like I've had. I go back. I go up and down with wrestling. Sometimes I'm super into it. Sometimes I don't really fuck with it at all. But it's just so different now, man. It's like just like everything else, really. It's just so corporate and like clean now and just yeah there's no there's no there's kayfabe. no edge to it there's, there's no, no yeah oh there's no kayfabe at all yeah like i don't want to watch like this is another thing that bugs me too it's like i know he's done now and he can do whatever the fuck he wants but like i don't want to watch the undertaker have a fucking podcast yeah i just oh, don't yeah. want to do that i don't want to watch it yeah i ribbed this guy in it's like, dude i don't i don't want to you were so cool about keeping the mystique and shit it's like yeah. i don't want to watch you sit down with tony hinchcliffe and fucking yeah. fuck around so who was your worst opponent and then he's that, like, yeah that was the other thing too back in the day with like celebs like let's take someone like eminem um so eminem let's go to like year 2000 he was eminem right he's slim shady you see him on mtv you see him on trl you hear him on the radio that's it that's all you yeah, get. You don't have social media posts. So he's like a character and he has mystique and there's something special about him. Because whenever you see him, it's like, oh my God, it's Eminem. I never see him. Now, everybody is doing so much shit that it's like, it's like overexposure. It's like nobody's special. Nobody stands out. Like the only big stars I can think of pop culture wise are like, what, like Taylor Swift and maybe like. Yeah, I guess. I don't even know who else. I mean, she's like the only one, and that's because she's like a Drake. Fucking, she's like a cult leader, yeah. And Drake. I mean, if Taylor Swift didn't have the flocks of female fans, but but I do give her that respect. Like it's it's nice having someone like that out there because like when we were growing up, you had fucking Michael Jackson and fucking Eminem and and everybody. They were all stars, like Britney Spears and. They all were stars, yeah. but when you make everyone the same, where everyone's doing podcasts and everyone's doing tweets all the time, it's like, you got to go away for me to miss you, right? Yeah, so, the mystique is the best part. Like, someone like Shane Gillis, like, there's no mystique there. Like, I don't I don't like fat guys that wear Notre Dame shirts. I just I, don't I, like them. And he can't grow, like, facial hair. Right. It's like, dude, that, you're not a cool you're guy. You're nerdy to right. me. Like, if you were around us... At like the bar, and you weren't Shane Gillis. If you were just a guy, like we wouldn't like you. No. We wouldn't think you're fun. We'd be like, "Who's this fat right. fuck? Who's this like corny nerdy guy with the, like I, anyone who wears Notre Dame it, polos?" Yeah, then I'm out. Well, on. Don't go to Groff's in Lockport because that's all they wear. That's true. Yeah, that's why I never went there. But but too much yeah, Notre Dame. It, it's it's like the comedy isn't funny. What bugs me about Shane Gillis is like he's seen as like the champion of like the edge lords, but he's like not. But why? Because he he's like oh I played football I do football jokes. You're I, like you're not. He's not an edgy guy. I, like he doesn't. And like he knows nothing line. about U.S. history, but like he'll present it to people like. Oh yeah, John Adams was the second president. Does he then, do that shit too? Yeah, and then like Joe Rogan will be like, "Oh, how'd you know that?" And it's like, "Well, ask Shane about it's US just a history. random random factoid." He, like, he just does that stuff where it's like, "Yeah, World War Two was amazing," and then General Wilhelm did this, and then people are like, "Wow, he knows a lot about the war." Oh wow! But he doesn't. He's just a sloppy fat guy. I don't. I mean, like. If we hate Burt Kreischer, why don't we hate Shane? Oh, I don't even consider Burt Kreischer. Like, to me, he's poorer than I am. 
<laughs> that makes a lot of sense. That's fucking poor. That makes a lot of sense, though. Like, he's Like, him trash. and Segura. Like, Segura. Like, they're trash. Yeah, I they're loved so them. bad. I loved them bombing at the Brady Rose. Who, and who likes them? Do you know anyone who no. likes those no. people? No. I remember uh, Josh, when he came over here the one day, the guy who lives across oh, the street. Oh, not Bosley. He said, he said that he had just gone to a Segura concert, oh. and we were, like, watching Red Bar roasting Segura, and it was kind of awkward, because it was like, yeah, we hate him. You obviously like him. You went to see him, but... You gotta you gotta remember, like if you don't know, yeah, and you yeah, haven't yeah. been like indoctrinated yet on the whole like shit, then like you're just an average person, and you like you think these guys are funny, and you just go you just go. Yeah, like, no, if, absolutely. Like if you don't absolutely. know, then you don't know. Like it's not until you get to see their schemes and what they're up yeah. to. I and, feel like he has like less time to look into things. Yeah, I mean he's busy. He's probably right. a busy guy, you. Know? But like we can sit there and be like, oh. And like investigate and absolutely, <laughs> so it's pretty funny. Yeah, back to Shane. Just it bugs me that he's like when he did SNL. Like everyone thought that was like a huge win for Didn't like free he, oh speech. the hosting. It's of it. like dude, this guy's not like. One day my brother came over here and like showed me a bunch of his skits, like his Gillian Keeves skits, uh. and like I felt weird because like my brother obviously thought they were great, and I just. I did not think they were funny. Oh. They were like white boy versions of like old Key and Peele skits, oh. like SNL style where like you get the joke in the first 10 seconds and then it's just pounding that concept over and over and over. It's just like, and this guy is like a skit guy. Like he like dresses up and like does filmed skits. He does the Trump. Like if we imagine if we did skits, we would think that was fucking gay. Wouldn't yeah, we? We, would, right. we wouldn't like that. We wouldn't be fans of that. So, like, doing skits is not Bro, cool. Most comedians are, like, nerdy They're guys. not cool guys. Yeah, they're pretty much all nerdy. I, I can't name one that's cool. I, Patrice was cool. Yeah, but because he was, like, he... Yeah. Patrice was cool, and he he yeah. died before he could get uncool. I used to like, like he, Jim Norton a lot. I like Jim Norton a lot, but seeing him turn into a 2000... 12 style YouTube vlogger yeah. has been fucking awful. Doesn't he have like a trans wife? Yes. His yeah. wife's a guy and he's he has like a channel with like clickbaity screenshots like he's like Jake Paul Ooh. in 2016. It's like, dude, I don't want to see Jim Norton do that. That's why like none of these people you can be loyal to because they're eventually going to do something that you hate. Yeah. Like even Bill Burr, who I was the most diehard fan of. Like, I've had to watch him turn into kind of a fucking weirdo. Yeah, I don't drink anymore. It's like, dude, like, and I get it, man. Like, I can't imagine the pressure of being, like, a top star in Hollywood. There's got to be a lot of people that you have yeah, to but, answer to. Yeah. But at the same time, of course, guys like me are going to miss, like, 2011 Burr when he had nothing and nobody gave a fuck about him and he said whatever he wanted. Like, it's way cooler. Women think being the hottest job in the world is being a mom. All right, bending over, putting DVDs into DVD players. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is too funny. I mean, his old specials are fucking amazing, but it's like once you get shit and once you're well-known and once you have things to lose, you're fucked. Yeah. It's like I have literally nothing to lose yeah, once you in life right now. Yeah, to the top, everyone's so trying to pull you down. I can do anything. I can, be, I can say whatever I want. Do whatever the fuck I want. I have nothing to fucking lose. When you start getting shit, you start getting money, you start getting fans, you start getting movie deals, you're in Star Wars, you're in this, you're in that, you have to toe the line on some level because you can't lose that shit. If you don't have anything, you're never risking losing anything. Yeah. But you don't, I mean, what what's better? Is it better to have shit and turn into a fucking weirdo or is it better to just have nothing and... There has to be a middle yeah, ground. Yeah, just kind of keep the ship All right. steady. So, I don't know. I think, I mean, I think that... I think I'm going to melt into this chair. I know, it's so fucking hot. It really is. We probably should wrap it up. I think we definitely... I mean, we came from nothing. We didn't even know what we were going to really do. We had a couple notes, and we just fucking let the ball roll. So, I think the plan is just going to be put this together and let it exist and let it turn into whatever it turns into i think it was a good i don't even i don't even know what we talked about we talked about everything i think we hit everything yeah what um how long do you think it's been since we? i have no idea i can't even guess I, I if i had to guess i would say like 80 minutes what you think too long i was thinking like a half hour 
I have no idea. I'm actually excited to check <laughs> I'm excited the time because I too. have no. Fu- I know that I have to piss so. I have to piss so bad too. It's Go crazy. Ahead, get... So yeah, we got to. Let gotta me call. do it first, so you can cut off, and I'll say my goodbye. All right. Thank you for having me back. Twin Thanks for Towers. being here, Mike. The Twin Towers, happy to represent, and we'll. We'll do this once a week. No once doubt. a week, if we if we can. At least. We're going to go out to dinner now. and Yeah, um, we're starving. We're and doing a Rogan-type take the guest out to dinner. A now. Rogan-type vibe where we go out to eat afterwards and drunk drive. So, yeah, I'll just do a brief little soliloquy. Um, this has been something that I've wanted to do for quite some time. I've been itching to do this, so I'm glad I could finally sit down and make this happen. I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's bad. I really don't give a fuck. I mean, it is what it is. It's just something. So if you took the time, if you watched it, if you spent some time, um, as always, please like the video. Please subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for more bullshit and thank you so much for being here because, well, I don't know. I don't really know if you're there or not. But nonetheless, it's been fun. It feels good to be back in the saddle. And I'm looking forward to doing it again soon. So thank you for your time. And we'll catch you next time.